All right, for those that have been following what's been going on on the channel, you may have seen all the work that has gone into the VR art galleries we've created and some of the journey. In this video, I wanted to break down some of the reasons behind all of this and talk about some of the lessons learned. I'm gonna go into some depth here, so I'm sorry if you wanted a quick take. You can watch the 200 VR art galleries video for a little bit of that. From the very beginning, when I first started playing with VR, I couldn't help but be captivated by the potential of VR chat. It wasn't just a chat platform, it was a haven for self-expression and artistry, and I could see it everywhere. The art galleries there I stumbled upon were both awe-inspiring and disappointing, which made my creative gears start turning. I must confess, I didn't embark on this journey because I had it all figured out. Oh no, my friends. I was propelled forward by sheer excitement and a dash of hubris. I wanted to create a truly transformative experience, one that would leave a lasting impact for those that came along. The first iteration of the VR art gallery, the SG art gallery, was a humble attempt. I showcased my own paintings because I didn't want to risk anybody else's, and I created a simple display theming them with dioramas that aimed to immerse visitors with the same emotions I felt while creating the art. But alas, it had its shortcomings. The limited number of paintings, my lack of ability to optimize anything, and let's not forget the literal fall off edges because, well, I forgot to put on guardrails. Oops. The biggest obstacle, though, was working with Unity, the game engine required for creating VRChat. But that was just the beginning. VRChat self imposed limits on worlds to ensure optimization and performance, especially for Quest 2 users, meant compressing art textures, sacrificing quality, and struggling to find the right balance. I can't even count how many times I made the mistake of crunching my textures a little bit too much. Still, Undeterred by these setbacks, I plunged deeper into the world of VR art galleries. And that's why I created the 200 VR art galleries video. I was kind of doing it anyway. I wanted to explore more from the successes and failures of others. And I really observed the usefulness of interactive elements, the importance of creating a meaningful space for the art. And some artists didn't limit themselves like I did initially, opting for intricate models and layouts. Determined to rise above the challenges, I embarked on my latest adventure. This time, I designed my own model, meticulously planning a floor plan that made sense and gave some breathtaking views, some realism, uh, which became my mantra from lighting to tone to structure. Make things a little bit more exciting, I managed to bring in my artist friend Christopher Kant on board, who still had a technologist's heart despite being a digital nomad with his art career. But boy, did I bite off more than I could chew. Running out of space became a constant worry as I incorporated Christopher's beautiful and detailed art into the gallery. Selecting the pieces became a thrilling adventure in itself, but I had to ensure that each artwork not only complemented its surroundings, but also weaved a compelling visual narrative to the best of my limited ability. Christopher's painterly style proved to be a perfect fit for immersive VR, and I think I'll look for that kind of style moving forward myself, or real painting as well. Amidst all the trials and tribulations, gathering feedback became my lifeline. I knew I couldn't navigate all of this treacherous journey alone, and so I saw insights from every possible source. Screenshots became an invaluable tool for the artist, and I even dabbled in AI image generation experiments to help me iterate on ideas. But it was the inputs from friends and fellow creators that truly shaped the direction of the gallery. I reached out to various Discord communities, humbly asking for their help and inviting two individuals with keen eyes to share their feedbacks. Now, while I'm sure that they don't think that their perspectives were game changers, they definitely were for me, revealing blind spots I hadn't even considered. And it was a moment of truth when I received honest feedback from another world creator and their words just rang out in my mind, which were, where do I go and what am I supposed to do here? The realization kind of hit me like a brick wall. My once built art gallery felt like an empty, devoid place because it had no purpose. You could go around and look at the art, but there was nothing else there. But again, I refused to be defeated. I knew I had to adapt and make adjustments, and after all, I really wanted this to succeed for Chris. It was time to breathe life into the space, so I rolled up my sleeves and got to work. 
Chairs were added, providing spots for visitors to rest and ponder. I cleared cluttered areas, creating breathing room and installing mirrors to give the gallery a sense of depth and usefulness and once again, even simple objects. As we wrap up here, here's the grand finale. If you're the one wanting to create your own VR art gallery, understand the platforms like Unity and VRChat. Be aware of their limitations. Optimization is probably the hardest thing. Focus on the art selection and presentation. Ensure the VR space complements the art and contributes to the overall narrative. And you should have an overall narrative that is easy to follow and for people to interact with. So prioritize the user experience by creating these user-friendly and immersive environments. Don't forget to seek feedback and collaborate with others and promote your art gallery. Remember, this project requires time and energy. So maintain in perspective and balance your commitment. Keep your passion alive and let it shine through your work. I hope mine has. For more updates, visit the sgxr.dev website. The journey so far has been incredible, and this is just the beginning. Here's to a future of art and technology intertwined. Stay tuned for what's next.